Hey everybody, it's Steph Mischuk with uh, you know, Killer Sites, Killer PHP. In this video blog, I'm going to talk about mobile app development and two basic strategies that, that you can use when you want to develop applications for iOS, you know, iPad, iPhone, and Android devices. Um, before I get into that, though, I just want to comment on the style of this video blog very quickly. I haven't done very many video blogs lately because I've just been really busy. And the way I used to do video blogs, I'd set up a separate video camera and set up my uh, one of my good mics, and you know, and it takes a lot of time to do that. So what I've decided to do is just use the webcam and use the built-in microphone. So the quality may not be as pro, you know, not to say the quality was super professional to begin with, but anyway, it's not as good as it could be, but it's going to be a lot easier for me to put out content. So I figure it's better that I put out a bunch of content, more content than to put out much less. Uh, so here we go. So when it comes to mobile app development, there's two basic things that you can do. Uh, you could either develop natively, meaning using the native language of the particular uh, device you want to work with. And there's two big schools. There's two big caps. There's the iOS cap, iPad, iPhone, and Android, of course. So if you're developing for iOS, you have to write everything in Objective-C which is an object-oriented language that predates Java. It's quite old, in fact. And I think it's, it's from the 80s. It's based off of another object-oriented language called Smalltalk. And then you have, for the Android platform, of course, you use Java. Now, there's two big um, things going against developing native apps for either platform. First of all, to learn Objective-C, it's not a trivial task. It's not like learning PHP. It's not like learning uh, JavaScript. It's, uh, it's much more difficult. There's much more of a challenge there. Uh, the other, same thing with Java. On the, on the Android side, where you have to learn Java, Java is not a trivial language to learn either. It's, some, it's called a strongly typed language. Uh, the libraries are quite complex. The, it's a very verbose code, meaning the code is quite long. So if you're used to writing JavaScript or PHP, Java is going to be, woof, it's going to be it's a lot of typing, you know. Same with Objective-C. Um, I don't know too much about Objective-C, so I just looked at it, glanced at it. Uh, Java, I'm quite well versed in. I used to, for years and years, I wrote Java apps, J2WE. Um, so the other big disadvantage besides the extremely steep learning curve with, with each platform, you know, iOS versus Android, is that uh, with uh, uh, when you write an app, rather, in either platform, you're going to have to then port it to the other platform. So if you write something in iOS with, uh, with Objective-C, then you're going to have to rewrite it in Java. Of course, copying an app that you see in one language to another is much easier from doing it from scratch, but then it's still a big, big job. The big advantage though of writing native apps is, is you get to take full advantage of the hardware that you're working on. So if you write something in Objective-C, you can take a full advantage of the, of the iPad or the iPhone or the, uh, I, the, 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 the touch there, you know, which is a, the touch device from Apple. I forget what it was. The iPod touch, there we go. Uh, you can take full advantage of that hardware. But again, you have to convert over. Same thing on the Android side. So you write in Java for Android device, you, you, you get to take full advantage of the device. So you have another option. You have a, a second option, instead of writing native, is to, uh, to just write using HTML5, CSS3-based uh, app, and you use a, a server-side backend like PHP or Ruby or something to power it. The two big advantages are, A, I think a lot of you are probably... Uh, may already know PHP and JavaScript, you may be familiar with HTML. Uh, so to learn HTML5 and to make that leap into CSS3 and so on, it's not a big deal, right? This learn, the learning curve is not nearly as steep. It's, it's, it's a lot quicker. So you can get to developing mobile apps pretty quickly. Uh, and the other big advantage is that when you write a mobile app for your Android device, it will probably work pretty good using you know those web standards HTML5, CSS3, you know, uh, JavaScript. It's probably going to work pretty well on your iOS device and even like your Windows Phone, for instance. You know, if you want to hit that two percent in the marketplace there. So 
the disadvantage, of course, is when you're writing in HTML5 and CSS3, you won't have a full access to the hardware and all the power that you would if you wrote natively, you know, iOS, natively Objective-C, and uh, Java HTML5, uh, excuse me, Java for the Android. And there's pros and cons, but for many, 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 many apps, you really don't need access to that full power. So uh, I would strongly suggest that before you ne necessarily jump into iOS programming or Java Android development, you consider whether or not your app really needs that. Um, and in fact, you, you know, some people's, in fact, when you write something in HTML5 and CSS3, a lot of times the amount of work it would take to adapt it to a pad, an Android pad or an iOS pad, um, is, is minimal, if anything. So for instance, we, one of the things we've been working on is our interactive uh, JavaScript, uh, excuse me, interactive training system, Studio Web here. And it's a web app with you know, interactive training, code, courses, and so on for schools. Schools are using it now and, and everything. But the thing is, it, it, without any work, really, it works on Android and iPad. To make it totally 100% really sexy for the iPad, where some of the code, uh, our, our, our code editor would have to have some iPad and Android uh, specific buttons rather than, because it's kind of hard to get into the keyboard. But anyway, and the main major point for 99% of the functionality, we basically had to do nothing to make this Studio Web app work on Android and iPad because it was designed properly and according to standards. And to make it 100%, it required maybe a couple hours of development work to really just add that little extra that needed to be done. So no need in this, in this case, we're pretty involved application, no need to write uh, native uh, Objective-C or uh, Java to get things done. So you want to, uh, you may want to consider that when you're making your choice. On the other hand, if you're looking for work as an iOS developer, and there's probably going to be plenty of work there for a long time, then you've got to learn your Objective-C. There's a third option. So I had native, HTML, HTML5 development, and then I had the third option is to use there's these third-party programs which I've never used. So I couldn't say how good they are. Where you write in there, in there, it's like a, it's like using a Dreamweaver or some program where you write out your your app in there, and then it will output the Objective C code or it will output the, the, the Android Java code. I don't know how well they work, but they're out there, and it's another option as well to consider. The problem with that kind of code generating systems traditionally. You're locking yourself in because they're going to be doing certain things proprietary in a proprietary way, meaning in, a, you know, in their own way, and you may have a her you may have a lot of limitations, and it may be difficult to debug some of these things. No, that's it. That's my discussion of uh, Android and uh, iOS uh, development, and uh, I hope you like this video blog, and I hope you don't mind this low uh, rent format that I'm using now. Ciao.